major source, uh, in my view, the most serious uh, source is our dependence on coal here in China and in many other places. Here are the existing coal plants in the United States. Here are the ones that have been proposed for construction uh, in the last six years. But I mentioned we were beginning to see a shift. Many people are not aware of how significant this shift is beginning to be. Here are the ones that have been canceled in the last few years. Yeah. In, in each of the last two years, a significant, uh, a, a more, a significantly more new generating capacity was added from wind power than from coal. The amount of coal generated electricity actually went down last year. And new green alternatives are being uh, proposed, and there are a lot of reasons for this. The coal industry is fighting back. And last year, uh, the coal industry spent a half a billion dollars on advertising and lobbying to promote uh, the, the, the image of what they call clean coal. And this was a full page ad in the Washington Post placed by Peabody Coal. And I looked at that image and I thought, there's something familiar about that. And then I remember. <laughs> When they spend $500 million putting their version of this story in the minds of the American people, it increases the importance of you being willing to speak out and as civic scientists find ways to communicate the truth about what this huge increase in global warming pollution uh, is doing. There's in all branches of medicine, in all parts of the country, for asked that question. What cigarette do you smoke, doctor? The brand name most was Camel. Yes, surveys show more doctors smoke Camels than... <laughs> Just before Christmas in my home state, a billion gallons of coal sludge was released. And uh, it was an ugly sight. Wait a minute. Uh, so on Christmas Day, I was surprised to see this advertisement from the coal industry singing lumps of coal. Dirty fuels that are killing our planet. Future's over here. 
wind, sun, a new energy grid, new investments to create high paying jobs. Repower America. It's time to get real. Now, in, in closing these images, I, I want to come back to Lincoln because he demonstrated that we as a nation do have the capacity to rise above our limitations and chart a new course. We have done this in the past with not only abolition, but the passage of women's uh, suffrage. We have seen uh, the ability of the United States to win two wars simultaneously and then to win the peace afterwards. We have brought about the civil rights revolution under the leadership of Dr. King and just uh, last month we saw the electrifying redemption of the revolutionary promise of America that all people are created equal. We saw the U.S. lead the free world in bringing down uh, the system of communism and we've seen vivid demonstrations of our ability to do great things uh, technologically. The day that this picture was taken, uh, in Houston, Texas, at Mission Control, there was, of course, a, a loud cheer. And looking back to the challenge from President John F. Kennedy, when he announced a national goal of landing a person on the moon and bringing that person back safely within 10 years. There were many people who doubted that we could do it. But eight years and two months later, this picture was taken. And those cheering in the control room, the average age of those systems engineers was 26, which means their average age when President Kennedy issued that challenge was 18. Many of you are speaking on a regular basis to young people about science. And you are doing so at a time when our home is in danger. We do have everything we need to save it, with the possible exception of political will. But the United States of America has just demonstrated that political will is, in fact, a renewable resource. 